I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I just want to know that um, if all of you can hear me, let me just hear an amen. Somebody to send me a message to just show us that you can hear what we are saying. We would want to get into a time of prayer before we can um, get into our subject today. Our title for the subject today is The Time of Jacob's Trouble. And we are going to be looking at this message when we are looking at it from the time that the door of mercy is going to be closed. So today we are looking at what is going to happen to the people of God when the door of mercy shall be closed and what is going to happen to the people of the world when the door of mercy shall be closed. For us to be able to enter into that, we need to ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Our most gracious, loving Father, which art in heaven, we would like to say thank you, Lord, for giving us a time that we can look into your word and be able to know of what is going to take place so that we may be prepared for that time that is to come. Please, our Father, be with us for this one hour that we have. We are asking, Lord, that you may be present in Christ Jesus' name. Grace us with your presence, we do pray. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, let's quickly get into the Bible. We are now going to the book of Daniel chapter 12. Let's have a look at what the Bible says in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, and we are reading together from um, verses 1. Look at what the Bible says from the book of Daniel chapter 12, verses 1. It says here, found it? He says, and at that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was, since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So I want us to understand this as we are looking at this verse. He says, there is a time that Michael, our prince, is going to stand up. And the question is this, when is he going to stand up and what does it mean that he would stand up? For us to understand this, let's go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 and verses 2. Hebrews chapter 8, verses 1 and verses 2. If you have found it, just read it. Look at what the Bible says. It says here, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. The question is this, where is Jesus Christ? He is set on the right hand of the majesty in heaven. That is the right hand of God. And what is he doing? Go with me to the book of Romans. Follow me very well. The book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And we are reading together verses 34. Romans chapter 8 verses 34. The Bible says... Who is he that condemneth? Right. It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, mm -hmm. who also maketh intercession for us. Thank you very much. Who also maketh intercession for us. So we are looking at this. He is at the right hand side of God. He maketh intercession for us. So now we are looking at this. When Christ shall stand up, guess what would have happened? The intercession or the mediation of Jesus Christ in heaven is going to be over. In other words, there will be no more mediator in heaven by the time that Jesus Christ is going to stand up. Go back with me to the book of Daniel chapter 12. Daniel chapter 12. I would want us to, to have a clear understanding of what the Bible says. Daniel chapter 12. And we read together verses 1 once again. What does it say? Daniel 12 verses 1. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at that time shall Michael send up the great prince we stand for the children of thy people. Okay, first of all, we hear the name Michael. What does the word Michael mean? Michael, it's simply, that is the other title that is given to Jesus Christ when we are talking about the time of battle. Now, Jesus Christ, who is known as Michael, he is going to stand up at one time. And when he's going to stand up, he has been there sitting on the right hand side of the father. His work was to become 
a mediator for us. But one time, he is going to stand up. He is the Michael, the prince, who standed for the children of thy people. In other words, he is standing for the children of God. He is now going to stand up. When he's going to stand up, it means that the mediation is over. What does it say? Go down. Uh, and there shall be a time of trouble. And such there is going to be a time of trouble such as what? Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. Thank you very much. It says that there is going to be a time of trouble. But there is something that is interesting. It is written that, but thy people shall be delivered. Who? Just read. What does it say? Thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Thank you very much. So there is a time for us to enroll our names in the register of heaven. And it is written that they, those people whose names are written in the book of life, those people are going to be delivered. And the time for registering our names in the book of life, my brothers and my sisters, it is now. But there will come a time when he's going to stand up and he's going to say, you know what, it is finished. And we read this one last time and we discovered that when Christ stands up, there is something that is going to happen. Go with me to the book of, of Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15 verses 8. What is going to happen to the room where he is, where he is right now? Revelation 15 verses 8. What does the Bible say? Yes. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God right? and from his power. Mm -hmm. And no man was able to enter the temple until... The seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Thank you very much. It is written that during that time when he's going to stand up and he's going to declare it is finished. A smoke is going to be thrown inside the temple. In other words, there will be no one to go there and mediate for anyone. The time is over. In other words, it's time up. The figures of the iniquity of the people has already reached the maximum and the Lord can no longer tolerate that one anymore. And so he says, it is finished. Allow me to read together with you from the book, um, uh, Early Writings, pages 279, Early Writings, pages 279. There is something that I would want us to put into our mind. What is going to happen during that very same time? Early Writings, pages 279. Look at what is written here. Uh -huh. I was appointed down to the time when the third angel's message was closing. Right. The power of God had rested upon his people. Right. They had accomplished their work and right. were prepared for the trying hour before them. Mm -hmm. They had received the letter rain or refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Right. And the living testimony had been received. Mm -hmm. The last great warning had sounded everywhere and it had been stirred up and enraged the inhabitants of the earth who would not receive the message. Thank you very much. I would want us to understand. Do you remember, if you can go with me once again to the order of events, how the things are going to be. We are in the time of judgment, and what is going to come, this, that is the test for the people of God, which is the national son, the law of the mark of the beast. And then from then on, those people who overcome the mark of the beast are going to receive the seal of God. And those people who receive the seal of God, they are going to receive the latter rain, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the last day, so that the people can be able to proclaim the message which even much more power and after receiving the letter rain they will proclaim now the loud cry which is revelation chapter 18 and which is combined together with the third angel's message which where the bible says from the book of revelation chapter 14 verses 9 to 11 uh, uh i saw the third angel said with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and shall drink the wine uh, i mean and receive a mark on his forehead or in his head the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture now we are looking at the wine of the wrath of god which is now going to be poured out during this very same time and it is written that during that time no one can be able to save you no one can be able to to, to talk to you so after the loud cry there is the close of probation we spoke about this one this uh this past sabbath but i would want us to clearly remember this my brother my sisters there is also the time of trouble that is written beside the fact that the wrath of god is going to be poured upon those people who have rejected the law of god there is also a great time of trouble which is known as the time of jacob's trouble that is going to take place right during that very same time let's go out to the book of jeremiah jeremiah chapter 30 look at what the bible says jeremiah chapter 30 verses 5 to verses 7 what does the bible say jeremiah chapter 30 verses 5 to verses 7 what does the bible say let's just For read that said the lord yes we have 
we have heard a voice of trembling of fear right and not of peace mm -hmm. ask ye now and see whether a man doth travail with child right wherefore do i see every man with his hands on his loins right as a woman in travail and all faces are turned into into paleness yes alas mm -hmm. alas that, for that day is great mm -hmm. so that none is like it mm -hmm. it is even the time of jacob's trouble right but he, he shall, shall be, be saved, saved out, out of, of it. it thank you very much there is something that i would want us to know once again on this point it is written that during that time it is known as the time of jacob's trouble now for us to understand how was the time of jacob's trouble let's go to the book of genesis chapter 32 Genesis chapter 32 from verses 22. What does the Bible say? Genesis chapter 32 from verses 22. What does the Bible say? If you found it, just read it. And he, and he arose up that night and took his two wives, yes. his two women servants, and his eleven sons and passed over the third Jabok. Right. And, and he took them and sent them over the brook and sent them over that he had right now verse 24 the first phrase what does it say and, and jacob, jacob was, was left, left alone. alone thank you very much jacob was left alone i want you to be able to remember let me just remind you of what has happened it is this boy jacob this patriarch jacob jacob is the one who was a twin we had a twin brother who was known as esau but esau was older than him because he was that he was born earlier and then you know what being a firstborn there were about three things that were important you had the right to the uh, 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 uh we, they called it the right of the birthright or i mean the birthright that we had was this number one you were supposed to be the progenitor of jesus christ you know not only that you were supposed to be the leader in becoming a priest after your father and not only that you were supposed to receive the double portion of inheritance and i wanted to understand this uh esau because he loved the muscle of lentils much more than the inheritance that he was supposed to receive the birthright he actually sold it at a plate of lentils and when he did that then jacob whose name it actually means a cheat or a liar he actually had to go and lie before his father and simply say you know what uh you know what i am esau your son and then when he said that, the father asked the question, what is your name? And he said, my name is Esau. And he says, okay, fine, but the voices of Jacob and yet your skin is like the skin of Esau. But anyway, let me just, let me be able to receive the food and then from then on I'm going to bless you. And then from then on he was blessed. And after the blessing that he received, Esau came back and he simply said, my father, I have come. Now there was the voice of Esau and the hands were the hands of Esau. But then the blessing had already been stolen. And then Esau simply said, I'm going to kill you. And so what did he do? Jacob, uh, according to what the mother had told him, he had to run to the uncle to Laban. So he had to go and run. And one day when he was right there at Bethel, he actually slept there. And when he slept, during the night he saw a ladder that was actually where the angels were, were climbing up and coming down climbing up and coming down and then right at the top of the ladder was God the father and right here below was actually Jacob who was sleeping showing that now his request for him to be forgiven of his sins was accepted of God and then from then when he rose up he simply said I did not know that this place is actually a place where heaven is open this is the gate of heaven and then he rose up and then he went to Laban but now he is coming back when he is coming back now he has two wives because his uncle actually had to cheat him once again so he came and he is on his way because God had told him now to rise up and go back again to the land of his fathers so when he was on his way now there was river, river Jabok which was there between him and an army of Esau was coming to destroy him why? because Esau had been actually instigated by the devil to go and kill and destroy his brother because of the lie that he had already committed now he remains he looks at this situation, Jacob, and he simply says, what shall I do? I can't let my family to see my anguish of sorrow and to see my, my, my soul that is troubled. I cannot let my family see this. So he took his family and he told them to go away. And so the Bible says, then Jacob remained alone. I want you to understand this, my brother, my sisters. 
in life, there are times that are going to come when you are going to remain alone and you have got to wrestle yourself alone with God. And now we are looking at this. Remember, Jacob had already, co co I mean, he had already confessed his sin before God and God had forgiven him. But now at this time, an enemy is coming and now he wants to make sure that all his prayers have been answered by God. And the Bible says, what does it say? Let's go down. Verses 24, he says, and Jacob remained alone. Alone. And what does the Bible say? Yes. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. So there is a man who came. He just touched him. And when he touched him, he thought, now the enemy has come. So you can imagine, he had to fight the rest of the whole night. The whole night, he was wrestling with this man. And his thinking was this, if I let this man one moment, I am dead. And I'm saying, my brother, my sisters, we are, this was a prophecy of, it was actually, it was a reality that happened to Jacob. <clears throat> but it was also a prophecy of what is going to happen to the children of God when the door of mercy shall be closed. And the devil like Esau, he, be, <clears throat> he would have to instigate upon the people who do not belong to God to simply say, go and destroy these people. The devil himself is going to rise up and he's going to say, look here, these people have committed their sins because the devil has the record of every sin that we have committed. But not knowing that the sins have already been forgiven and the cases have already been settled in heaven, now the devil comes and he simply says, Lord, this is not fair. How can you let these people be able to be protected when in actual fact that they have committed sin? The devil has all these these sins that we have committed but one good thing about it is this when we confess our sins in heaven god himself knows that we have confessed our sins and we are forgiven in the beloved in jesus christ but the devil doesn't know about it why is because these things they take place in heaven and i'm saying to you my brothers my sisters it is at this time in which is known as the time of jacob's trouble and the bible continues to say what does it say read verse 25 and when he saw that he, the Bible says that uh, 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 he wrestled with the man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hole of Jacob's thigh was out of the joint as he wrestled with him. Now he discovered that, you know what, the hand that has touched me is no common name. Is not common hand. This is a hand of the mighty. This is the hand of God that has touched me because there is no normal man who can simply touch on my thigh and then my they 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 there is a dislocation on the bone and socket joint. There is no common man who can be able to. This is a heavenly being. And now when he was struggling with the with the with the pain of the joint that he had, he had to hold, hang on onto the man of heaven. He now says, simply says, look at this. Look at what the Bible says. He says, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go. I will not let thee go except thou let thou bless me. In other words, he looks at him and he simply says, you know what? This is my last chance. This is my final chance. I'm going to be meeting Esau. Esau is coming to kill me. But I want to know if I have been forgiven. If I am forgiven, then it's well with me. I can die, but at least I know that I have been forgiven. And then, you know, the rest of the story he says, then the man asked him a question. He says, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. This time, he does not lie and say, my name is Esau. No, now he comes to terms with his own real name. And he says, my name is Jacob. Jacob, which means a liar. And then the, 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 the one who was wrestling with him simply said, from now onwards, you are no longer going to be called Jacob. You are now going to be called Israel, for you have fought with God and man, and you have won. In other words, I am simply saying, my brother, my sister, he wrestled during that night, uh, the whole night, and he said, I'm not going to let you until you bless me. My brothers, my sisters, we are going to be passing during the time of Jacob's trouble when the door of mercy shall be closed and there will be no more mediator in heaven. The pronunciation, I mean, the, 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 the pronouncement that God would have done, he will um, just let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. It is done. Those, that sentence would have been pronounced. And then during that time, Jesus Christ 
would have left the most holy place. The seven last plagues are falling upon this earth and the wicked people, they think that we are the cause of their ruin. We are the cause of their, of their the disasters that are falling upon them. And so what do they say? What shall we do with these people who are keeping the law of God, who keep the Sabbath of the Lord? Let's wipe this whole face of the earth of these people. Let's get rid of them. Why? It is because the devil has already taken hold of of, of the beast, the Catholicism. He has already taken hold of the apostate Protestantism. Now there is this little Mordecai on the gate. There is this little group of people who keep the commandments of God, who are not on the side of the devil. It is at this time that the devil simply says, you know what? Let us go and kill these people. But I want you to clearly understand, around us are sentinels of heaven. They are angels of heaven who are protecting his people. Why? It is because we have kept the commandments of God. I want you to be reminded, my brother, my sisters, the greatest anguish that we are going to have is not about the death that is going to be falling upon us. We are going to be thinking, is it not because of our sins that we are going to be destroyed? And therefore, look at the wickedness that is increasing. These people are increasing wickedness upon wickedness, and it's seems as if there is no one who can stop the tides of wickedness that are coming into the church and also into the whole world. Who can be able to blow the trumpet so that the people can be able to come to the Lord? When they look at that, they are going to be seriously troubled. But when they look at their lives, they see that there is nothing good in them to be able to present it before God for God to spare his people. And so they look at it. There is an anguish of the soul. They don't know whether their sins are forgiven. When they look at their lives, they see there is no good thing about that they can be able to boast about and bring before God. Why is because, let me tell you something, my brothers, my sisters, every good thing that they have done, they have done it in the power of the Lord. Every sermon that they have preached, they have preached in the power of the Lord. Every good gift that they have given to someone, they have done it in the name of the Lord. So there is nothing that can be able to, to prove them to be very good people. But God himself has a record which is in heaven. And so when they look at that, they shudder at the mistakes that they have done in life. But I want you to clearly understand, during that very same time, God still has his angels. And the devil comes to the Lord and he simply says, Lord, please give me these people, they are mine. You cannot be a good and just God. Who is going to simply say, any sinner, as I have sinned, I've been taken out of heaven. And these people have sinned and you are going to take them to heaven and still be just? How can that be? This cannot, this is not fair. And so the Lord allows the devil to try the people of God. But don't forget, my brother, my sister, as we read from the book, Testament, Volume 5, pages 147, where the Bible says the motto of every Christian is going to be death before dishonor or the breaking of one of the commandments of God. This is going to be the motto of every Christian. And they have come to the point of simply saying, you may kill us, no problem, but we are not going to commit any sin. As long as we are going to be alive, we are going to live for God. Like Paul, they are going to say, for me to live is Christ, for me to die is great, so they is gain. I have nothing to, to worry about. The only thing that I'm troubled is, I want the name and the glory of the Lord to be revealed. I want you to know this, my brother, my sister. This is what is going to happen during that time. Allow me just to read. Let me just read from the Spirit of Prophecy. A statement here which is very important. I'm reading from the book, Great Controversy, pages, pages 6 to 18. Look at what is written here. I want us to clearly understand what is happening during the time of Jacob's trouble because it is important for us to know. It says, it says here, when the third angel's message closes, mercy no longer pleads for the guilt inhabitants of the earth. The people of God have accomplished their work. They have received the letter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and they are prepared for the trying hour before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven. An angel returning from the earth announces that his work is done. The final test has been brought upon the world and all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of the living God. Then Jesus ceases his intercession in the sanctuary above. He lifts his hand and with a loud voice he says, it is done. He says, it is done. And all the angelic hosts lay off their crowns as he makes the solemn announcement. He that is unjust, let him be unjust is still and he that is filthy let him be filthy still and he that is righteous let him be righteous still and he that is holy let him be holy still that's revelation 22 verses 11 every case has been decided for life or death christ has made the atonement for his people and blotted out their sins the number of his subjects has been made up the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven 
is about to be given to the heirs of salvation. And Jesus is to reign as King of kings and the Lord of lords. I want you to know this, my brothers, my sisters. It is during this time that we are going to be plunged into what is known as the time of Jacob's trouble. So, when he leaves the sanctuary, the darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. The, and in that fearful time, the righteous must live in the sight of the Holy God without an intercessor. Can I remind you something? Do you remember of somebody we had to stay in the presence of the Holy God without an intercessor? Jesus Christ, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not have any intercessor. And I want you to be reminded, my brother, my sister, we are going to come to a time where we have got to stand before God without an intercessor. But it doesn't mean that the angel of God will not, will not come and protect us. Because the Bible says the angel of the Lord encompasses round about those people that fear him and he delivers them. I want us to clearly understand my brother and sister. We are coming to a time where we have got to be standing right there with I mean, with God in front of us, and then there is no more mediator. And can I remind you something, my brothers and sisters? It is the time that the falling of the last seven plants are going to be taking place upon the people. It says, the restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed, and Satan has entire control. Listen, my brothers and sisters, it is during this time that the devil himself is going to have entire control upon those people who have actually uh, uh, decided not to listen to God. He says the restraint which has been upon the wicked is removed and Satan has entire control of the finally impenitent. God's long suffering has ended. The world has rejected his mercy, despised his love and trembled upon his law. The wicked have passed the boundary of their probation. What a pity. Listen, my brother, my sister says, the spirit of God persistently resisted, has been at last withdrawn, and sheltered by the divine grace. They have no protection from the wicked one. Satan will then plunge the inhabitants of the earth into one great final trouble. And as the angels of God cease to hold in check the fierce winds of human passion, all the elements of strife will be let loose. The whole world will be involved in ruin more terrible than that which came upon Jerusalem of old. My brothers and my sisters, I would want us to clearly understand during that time when that door of mercy is closed, when the mercy ceases to be pleading for the wicked race, during that time, it is in that very same moment that actually the Lord, when he says, it is done, then the restraining spirit, which we read from the book of Revelation chapter 7, verses 2, verses 1, 2, 3, where we find that there are four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds, that the winds would not blow upon, upon the world, upon any tree, upon on anything, until the people of God are sealed. But now the people of God are already sealed. And now these angels are now given, they are bidden now to let loose the winds. And now the devil has been preparing for a battle. And remember, Russia is prepared today. America is ready. And North Korea is ready. And I want you to know that the nations are angry today, but they cannot be able to do anything. Why? It's because people of God are still here. I am reminded of the time during the time when Lot was actually in Sodom and Gomorrah. When he was there during that very same time, the fire could not come to destroy the people who were there simply because Lot and his family members were still right there. Can I tell you something, my brother, my sisters? The Lord will not destroy this world as long as his people are still there ready to stand for him let me remind you of what the message of the angels was i am read i'm reading from the book of genesis chapter 19 look at what the bible says from the book of genesis chapter 19 what did the angels say to the people look at this it 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 it, it, it is uh it says here and it came to pass uh when they had brought them forth that is lord and his family that he said escape for thy life i'm reading verses 17 uh, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lord said unto, unto, uh, uh, unto them, O oh, not so, Lord, behold, now thy servant hath found grace in the sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in serving my life. I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I and I die and behold now this city is near to flee unto and it is a little one oh let me escape there is it not a little one and my soul shall there shall live and he said unto him see I have accepted thee concerning this thing also then I will not overthrow this city for the for for the which thou uh, hast spoken 
haste thee, escape thither. Now listen to the message that I want you to understand. For I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zohar. That's verses 20, 22. But let me tell you something, my brother, my sisters. In this very same time, the Lord clearly says, because you are here, I cannot destroy these cities until you are gone. Can I tell you something, my brother, my sisters? The Lord is simply saying today, all the world is actually at the mercies of the righteous people who are still living in this world. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care how many governments you have. I don't, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how much armament you have. I don't care how powerful you are in the eyes of the world. But I want you to know this one thing. In the eyes of the serious God, I mean, of the serious God that I worship, you are alive because of the righteous few who are standing on the side of God. And because of that, my brothers, my sisters, this world is still not yet divulged in the fire. It is mainly because they are righteous people, the people of God, who are standing for God. And I want you to know this, my brothers and sisters, when the door of mercy shall be closed, there shall be blood shed everywhere. War and strife is going to be, actually, is going to be erupting from every direction. And the love that we are looking at today, that we, we seem to be looking at what is happening around us, and we simply say, you know what, you know, this world is wicked. It's going to be worse off than what it is today. People are going to be walking naked, and people are going to be killing each other, and there's not going to be any mercy. The reason as to why today, if somebody gives you a punch, and then from then on, you, he looks at you, and then he begins to sorrow in his heart it is because the holy spirit is still there but the day that the holy spirit is going to be taken away from him there will be no more mercy and i want you to know this my brother and sister during that time is going to be a time of trouble and when that time is going to be there the people of god are not going to be spared of the trouble of the anguish of the soul look at this my brother and sisters allow me to go together with you to the book great controversy i'm reading together with you because i would want us to understand where we are and where we are going look at what is written here I'm reading from the book, Great Controversy, pages 615. Look at what is written here. What is the devil going to be doing? He says, when God's presence was finally withdrawn from the Jewish nation, priests and the people knew it not. Though under the control of Satan and swayed by the most horrible and malignant passions, they still regarded themselves as the chosen of God. The ministration of the temple continued. The sacrifices were offered upon his polluted altars. And daily the divine blessing was invoked upon the people guilty of the blood of God's dear son and seeking to slay his ministers and apostles. So when the irrevocable decision of the sanctuary of the sanctuary has been pronounced and the destiny of the world has been forever fixed, the inhabitants of the earth will know it not. The forms of religion will be continued by a people from whom the spirit of God has been finally withdrawn and the satanic zeal with which the, pray, the prince of evil will inspire them for the accomplishment of his malignant designs will bear the semblance of the zeal for God. As the Sabbath has become the special point of controversy throughout Christendom, the religious and secular authorities have combined to enforce the observance of Sunday. The persistent refusal of a small minority to yield to the popular demand will make them objects of universal exec execration. It will be urged that the few who stand in the opposition on the opposition to an institution of the church and a law of the state ought not to be tolerated and that it is better for them to suffer than, than for the whole nation to be thrown into confusion and lawlessness. And therefore, this is the very same argument that was written when, they were, when Caiaphas was talking about Jesus Christ. He said, it is better for one man to die than therefore for the whole nation to suffer. Not knowing that he was actually giving a prophecy. And the same issue is going to be repeated again in our time. It is better for these people to die than for the whole world to perish. These people are stopping us from entering into the millennium, a time of peace. Let's make sure that these people are dead. And uh, you can imagine the soldiers coming around the, the helpless people, just like Jacob, we had no armament, he had no arrows, he had no guns, he had no bazookas, he had no, I mean, he had nothing, literally nothing. He was only a father with the flock and the wives, and now he is coming back home. And I want you to know this, my brothers and sisters. The people of God are helpless. They are surrounded by armies which are coming to destroy them. But praise be to God, angels who are mighty in strength, they stand to defend his people. During the very same time, the seven last plagues are doing their work of destruction upon those people who have rejected the law of God. My brothers and my sisters, I want you to clearly understand this is the time of trouble such as never was. Let me read together with you from the book of Great Controversy, page 622. It is important. It says, it says, 
says, the people, page 616, he says, the people of God will then be plunged into those scenes of affliction and distress described by the prophet as the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's night of anguish when he wrestled in prayer for deliverance from the hand of Esau. He says, on reaching the borders of the land, he was filled with terror by the tidings of Esau's approach. And so he went into the time of, of prayer. I want you to clearly understand this. Can I remind you this, my brother, my sisters? Do you remember that Jacob, Jacob had already confessed his sins by the time that he reached, he reached the, the river Jacob, the Jabok? And can I remind you this, my brother, my sisters? By the time that the time of Jacob's trouble is going to come, we would have asked for forgiveness for all the sins. We would have forsaken all the sins because the Bible says, he who confesses his sins shall prosper. But he who does not forsake his sins, he shall not have mercy. But we would have forsaken the sins, confessed and forsaken them. And now during the time of Jacob's trouble, it will be the anguish of the soul. But we have no unforgiven and unconfessed the sins. What am I saying, my brothers and sisters? Now today, where you are today, now is the time that we can be able to ask for the, for the forgiveness of all our sins. It is the time that we have got to have this motto that says, you know what, I would rather die than commit a single sin. My brothers and my sisters, we are living in the most solemn time. When every one of us is supposed to be looking for God. Look at what is written here, pages, pages 621. I would want us to clearly understand where we are and where we are going. Let me tell you this. Do you remember that Jacob's hope was only in the mess of God and that his only defense was prayer? What is going to be your hope? It has to be only in God. And what is going to be your defense? It is only going to be prayer. So, let me tell you, let me just show you this. He says here, let me just read verse... Um, um, Pages, pages 621. Look at what is written here. He says, a certain influence to march against Jacob. Esau to march against Jacob. So he will stay up the wicked to destroy God's people in the time of trouble. And as he accused Jacob, he will urge his accusations against the people of God. He numbers the world as his subject. But the little company who keep the commandments of God are resisting his supremacy. If he could blot them out from the earth, his triumph would be complete. He sees that the holy angels are guarding about them. And he infers that their sins have been pardoned. But he does not know that their cases have been decided in the sanctuary above. He has an accurate knowledge of the sins which, which he has tempted them to commit. And he presents these before God in the most exaggerated light. Representing his people to be just as deserving as himself of exclusion of the favor of God. He declares that the Lord cannot be justice cannot in justice forgive their sins and yet destroy him and his angels. He claims them as his prey and demand that they be given into his hands to destroy. My brothers and my sisters, can I, can I just remind you something here? I want you to clearly understand. Do you know that the time that you commit sin, you actually give a room for the angels of the devil to taunt the angels of God to simply say, are you telling me that these people are the results of the blood of Jesus Christ, of the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. These people are the ones who are going to take our position in heaven. And then they turn and they simply laugh and they mock at the angels of heaven. Whenever we commit a single sin, this is what is happening in the world that we are not seeing, that we are not seeing, where the angels are actually mocking the angels of heaven to simply say, are you coming to defend these people? Oh, look at how they can be able to sin. Look, at, they are sinning so willingly. Listen, my brother, my sister, did you know that every time that you resist, the devil. Every time that you resist all the temptation of the devil, it is written in the book of remembering that these people are mine. My brothers, my sisters, I'm talking to you at this time. We do not have the time to waste because the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be a very tough one. I would want us to clearly understand this as certain accuses the people of God on account of their sins. The Lord permits him to try them to the uttermost. Their confidence in God, their faith and their infirmness and will be severely tested as they review the past, their hopes to sink. For in their whole lives they can see little good. They are fully conscious of their weakness and unworthiness, certain endeavors to terrify them with the thought that that their cases are hopeless and that the stain of their defilement will never be washed away. He hopes to destroy, so to destroy their faith that they will yield to his temptations and turn from their allegiance to God. Can I tell you this, my brother, my sister? This is how the devil is working. 
to make sure that no one can be able to make it to heaven by reminding you of what you have done in the past. Listen to this, my brother, my sisters. I am reading pages um, uh, 621. Look at what is written here. There is something that I want us to clearly understand. Jacob's history is also an assurance that God will cast off uh, will not cast off those who have been deceived and tempted and betrayed into sin, but who have turned into him unto him with true repentance. While Satan seeks to destroy this class, God will send his angels to comfort and protect them in the time of peril. The assaults of Satan are fierce and determined. His delusions are terrible, but the Lord's eye is upon his people. Amen. And his ear listen to their cries. The affliction is great. The flames of the furnace seem about to consume them but the refiner will bring them forth as gold tried in the fire God's love for his children during the period of their severest trial is as strong and tender as in the days of their sunniest prosperity but it is needful for them to be placed in the furnace of fire their earthliness must be consumed that the image of Christ may be perfectly reflected my brothers my sisters the Lord simply says it is important but how how can we describe that time? Allow me to go with you. The book Testimony Volume 1. Testimony Volume 1, 1T. One Allow me to read together with you pages 204. Look at what is written here. There is something that I would want us to understand during that time. Because I, I want you to clearly know, my brother, my sister, that things are not going to be so easy as we might, as we might think. Things are not going to be easy. But the good news is this. God himself is going to be together with his people. Let me just read this one. Look at what is written here. Those who exercise but little faith. Now this is Bell Controversy 622. Uh, those who exercise but little faith now are in the greatest danger of, faith, of falling under the power of satanic delusions and the decree to compel the, the, the conscience. And even if they endure the test, they will be plunged into deeper distress and anguish in the time of trouble because they have never uh, made it a habit to trust in God, the lessons of the of faith which they have neglected, they will be forced to learn under a terrible pressure of discouragement. We should now acquaint ourselves with God by proving his promises. Angels record every prayer that is earnest and sincere. My brothers and my sisters, I would want us to clearly understand. We are going to come to a time when the things are going to be very tough, but God has said he is going to be the protector of his people. Amen, somebody. Can I remind you this, my brother? Do you remember Daniel when he was thrown into the lion's den? Did God forget him? The answer is no. Do you remember uh, Jeremiah when he was thrown into the pit? When, into the pit when he was actually busy declaring the message of God? Did God forget him? No. Do you remember Baruch, the one who was actually writing the messages of Jeremiah? When well, it was during the time of trouble, they simply say, you know what? Go and pick up Baruch. We want to, to kill him. And the Bible says God had to hide Baruch in another place. Why? It is because God, it is his joy to protect his people. Not only that, do you remember Lot in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, in the two cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? Did God forget about Lot? The answer is no. He had to take him out. Do you remember Noah? During the time when the wicked had actually been upon the face of the earth and all the thoughts and the imaginations of the people were continuously evil in their minds. Did God forget about Noah? The answer is no. Is the Lord going to forget about you during that time? The answer is no. Why? It's because you belong to him. My brothers and my sisters, allow me to read to this, this little book that I have here, Last Day Events, pages 2, 255. I want to just read this one together with you. I would want us to clearly understand where we are and what is going to happen during that time. Pages 255. Listen to what is written here. Because there are some people who are not going to be able to stay in the time of trouble. And the Lord is going to call for them so that they can be able to, uh, so that they can be able to, they may be laid to rest during that time. He says here, it is not always safe to ask for unconditional healing. He knows whether or not those whom petitions are offered would be able to endure the trial and the test that would come upon them if they, if they lived. He knows the end from the beginning. Many will be laid away to, uh, to sleep before the fiery ordeal of the time of trouble and shall come 
uh, shall come upon the upon our world. It is written that, you know what, a lot of people, there are some people who are going to be laid to rest. Some of our elderly people are going to be laid to rest before the time comes. Some of our young people, the little ones, let me just read this statement, which is from Second uh, Selected Messages, Volume 2, pages 259. It says here, the Lord has often instructed me that many little ones are to be laid away before the time of trouble. We shall see our children again. We shall meet them and and know them in the heavenly courts. Amen, somebody. The Lord is going to allow some of the, our little children to be able to rest. Why? It's because they cannot stand in that time. But can I tell you, my brother, my sister, that time is going to be so strong. Let me read together with you. Let me just read this statement because it is very important. It says here, uh, the season, uh, let me just read this one, um, which talks about how, it, how terrible it is going to be in, during that time. It says here, the season of distress and anguish before us will require faith that can endure weariness, delay, and hunger. A faith that will not fade though severely tried. The period of probation is granted to all to prepare for that time. Jacob prevailed because he, pre he was persevering and determined. His victory is an evidence of the power of importunate prayer. All who will lay hold of God's promises as he did and be as earnest and, pre and persevering as he was will succeed as he succeeded. Those who are unwilling to deny self to agonize before God to pray long and earnestly for his blessings will not obtain it. Now listen to this statement he says, wrestling with God how few know what it is. How few have ever had their souls drawn out after God with intensity of desire until every power is on the stretch. When waves of despair, which no language can express, sweep over the supply, and how few cling with unyielding faith to the promises of God. Let me tell you, my brother, my sisters, it is written that, oh, how few people know how to wrestle with God. What am I saying this, my brother, my sisters? I'm simply saying, we are going to get into the time of trouble. When the seven last plagues are going to be falling upon the earth. And when the people of the world are going to be looking at what is going to happen around us, when they are going to see that the blood is going to be coming from the, from the tapes that were supposed to be producing water and the fountains are going to be filled with blood and the sources of water filled with blood, they are going to look at us and they are going to say, you are the cause of our ruin. But not only that, my brother, my sisters. Can I remind you something? During that time, when there is going to be that problem, that is the seven last plagues are going to be falling. You know what the people are going to do? When they are going to be looking at Jesus Christ coming from with the clouds of heaven, coming there, and then they are going to see the earth heaving and swelling and surfaces breaking up and the sea boiling like a pot and then the stones being held in every direction, the trees and the buildings crumbling to the ground. And when they look at that and they see Jesus Christ, the Son of God coming, and they are going to ask the question to the preachers, preachers, did you know that this day was going to come? And they are going to say, yes, we knew. And you let us to be able to go into this. We are lost and we are in ruin because of you and then the knives that they have been preparing to slaughter the people of God are the knives that they are going to use now to go and cut off the heads and slay those false preachers. Why? It's because they did not tell them about what was going to fall upon the earth. My brothers and my sisters, I, wa I do not want your blood to be upon me. I want to tell you right now, if you are a thief, you have got to stop stealing. If you are a person who has been running, going to the to the to the to the to, 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 to the seashore where you stay there, right there, the sand bars, and then where you stay there undressed, and then the whole world is looking at you, you better stop that because how can you be able to, to be able to defile the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? How can you be able to go and expose your body which has been bought with the price? I remember reading from the Bible. We say that you are not your own. You have been bought with the price. And this price is blood. Jesus is the blood of Jesus Christ. And he's looking for you to be saved in the kingdom. And there are some people who are used to be lying, lying for free. And the people are used to just saying anything that they would want. What is, what is your name? My name is this one. And yet the name is another one. Why are you lying? We are talking about the people who are living in the last days. Some people are breaking the Sabbath as much as they would want. And they do not know that in heaven everything is recorded. My brothers and my sisters, everything that you do is recorded either for faithfulness or for unfaithfulness. And Jesus Christ is coming to be taking us home. 
And I'm simply appealing to each and every one of us. If you have never read the commandments, go to Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 to verses 17. Read all the Ten Commandments and you test your life according to the standard of heaven because we are going to be judged according to the law of God. And I want you to be reminded, my brother and sister, I've spoken to you about we have broken the law of God, we have destroyed the law of God, we have changed the Sabbath into Sunday, and I've told you that is papacy. And all the Protestants of today, apostate Protestantism, is actually following suit. They are actually following the, 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 the apostasy of the Church of Rome. And because of that, my brothers and my sisters, a lot of people are going to be lost. And this is the reason why the Lord sends the Lord cry. And he says in Revelation chapter 18 verses 4, Come out of here, my people. Come out of Babylon. Why? It's because the Lord looks at you. He loves you. He looks at you and he simply says, How shall my people die when I've actually prepared a home for them? Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, do you remember Jesus Christ speaking, let not your heart be, be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me in my Father's house, I many mentioned. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Christ is coming. Let me tell you, my brother, my sister, do you know that it is at this time that we are supposed to be perfect in Christ? It is at this time. Read with, together with me from the book, Great Controversy, pages 623. Look at what is written here. 623, it says here, Now, while the high priest is making atonement for us, we should seek to become perfect in Christ. Can somebody say amen? Perfect in Christ. Not even by a thought could our Savior be brought to yield to the power of temptation. Certain finds in human hearts some point where he can gain a foothold. Some sinful desire is cherished by means of which his temptations assert their power. But Christ declared of himself, the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing. That's John chapter 14, verses 30. Satan could find nothing in the Son of God that would enable him to gain the victory. He had kept his father's commandments and there was no sin in him that Satan could use to his advantage. Now listen to the, to the conclusion of that, of that paragraph. It says, this is the condition in which those must be found who shall stand in the time of trouble. Can somebody say amen? Listen, my brother, my sisters, this is going to be the condition of those people who are going to be found during the time of trouble. They are people we have actually decided, you know what, I would rather die than commit a single sin. My brothers, my sisters, how is your dressing, sisters? How is your dressing today? Are you the ones who are putting on the tight clothes? Are you the ones who are putting on the see-throughs? Are you the ones who are, took, who are actually let, letting your breasts to be outside? Are you those people who are actually letting your legs to be seen by everyone else? Are you those people who are actually selling yourselves cheap when we are living in these last days? My brothers and my sisters, we are living at a time when Jesus Christ is about to come. And he is making up his precious jewels, ready to take them home. He is actually preparing his grain for the for the heavenly Ghana and he is preparing you and your heart even with this message that you may be found in the kingdom of heaven. And I'm simply saying to you, my brother, my sister, it is time that you may turn again to God. I want to ask a simple question, my brother, my sister. If this message has been so true, if it has been very clear to you, man, I want to talk to you once again before I can be able to pray. Maybe you are a person who has a wife at home, but you have got some other numbers on your telephone, which your wife does not know, whom you are actually dating, you are dating someone who is outside your family or maybe you will actually have another another relationship with with another person and, and you know that this is not right before God because all the sins are outside the body but the sin of adultery is a sin also against your body if you are there you need to be living that and you have got to come back to Jesus Christ with the heart that is sincere and you empty yourself before God and you simply say Lord please be with me this is the time allow me to read together with you my brothers and my sisters it, it, it is at this time that I would wish that uh, uh, the next time that we are going to be meeting, we may be meeting together in Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, chat in heaven, thank you for the time. Thank you for loving us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us the message. Remember us, Lord, in your kingdom. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Maranatha.